Hello, in this video, we will cover how to solve different one-dimensional array programs in Java. Now to do the array programs, you need to first know what an array is. We have already covered this in our previous video along with short questions on it. So in this video, we will focus on how to solve different programs. The 1D array programs that we are going to cover are various number programs, character programs, string arrays, multi one dimensional arrays and searching and sorting arrays. To do these programs, first you will need to take an array as input. Depending upon the question, this input could be passed to you as a function argument or if the question just says take an array, then you can declare an array variable of whatever data type is given in the question like int array or double array and initialize it with some values. Or if the question says you have to take input from the user, then you declare a scanner class, create the array using new of given type and size and then get each element of the array in a loop using scanner class functions. For our program, we will assume we have an array ARR with some values and we start the program from here. We will assume you do know how to insert the program in main or in a function as required by the question. Now to solve most of the array programs, you have to go from start to the end of the array means go to each element one by one. This is called as array traversal. If we can create a template for array traversal, then our 50% of the problem is solved and then we can just change the logic in it as per the question. So how do we create this template? We know in an array, each element is stored at index value starting from zero. So we will use a for loop to generate this index for us. This loop will start from zero and run till the length of the array. Here we are using array property called length which gives us the number of elements in an array. Now in this loop, we can access array elements by using i as the index. Since the index is changing from 0 to array length minus 1, we effectively traverse through all elements of the array. So now we will use this template to answer different array questions. We will start with simple printing questions like write a program to print all elements of the array. We will first get the traversal loop we just discussed. All we need to do is put ARRI which gives us each element in a println statement. This will traverse the array and print for us all elements in the array. I have used int array but the array could be of any data type. The program could also be to print only even numbers in the array. In such a case, we will just add a if statement to check if number is even. If it is even, we print it. This gives us the program and the required output. Here pay attention to the question whether it is saying even number or even index. If the program says print all numbers at even index, then in the if condition, you have to check if i% 2 is equal to 0. The program could be to print all even numbers followed by the odd numbers. Here we need to do one full traversal to print all even numbers and then one more traversal which has an if condition for odd number check to print all the odd numbers. This gives us the program and the required output. The next program could be to print all two digit numbers in an array. Here again, in traversal loop, we just need to add an if condition to number greater than 9 and less than 100 and print only those numbers. This gives us the required output. Like this, there can be many variations of the same question like print all positive numbers, print numbers divisible by 5, numbers ending with 7. And the only line you need to change is the if condition to get the new program. Sometimes the program is just to do some simple calculation on the array and then print them. 
like a program to print the square root of each array element. Here again we will get our template and in the print statement you can just use the sqrt function from the math library and print it. Or the program could be to print the cube of all numbers in an array. Again you just need to use the power function from math library and print the cube of the number. Now the next category of programs are count, sum, product, min, max programs. Any of the printing programs we just learned can be easily converted to these programs and we will start with sum. Like find the sum of all array elements or sum of even numbers. Now there are three steps to convert any of the printing program to sum program. So we take the even number printing program we just wrote. First step is to declare a variable to store the sum before the traversal loop and initialize that variable to zero. Next is where we are printing, instead of printing, add the array element to sum. Once it has finished adding all the elements, means we have finished array traversal, outside the loop we print the sum. This program will add all numbers in the array and give us the sum. Now variation of this program could be to find the sum of odd numbers or two digit numbers or positive numbers. This code will work for all print programs we just did by changing the if condition as we learnt in the print programs. Now let's see product which is also similar. If the program is to find the product of even numbers, there are again three steps to convert any print program to product program. So we take the even number printing program we just wrote. First step is to declare a variable to store the product before the traversal loop and we initialize this variable to 1. Next is where we are printing. Instead of printing, multiply the array element to product. Once it has finished multiplying all elements, means we have finished array traversal, we come out of the loop and we print the product. This program will multiply all elements of the array. Now this program could be product of odd numbers or two digit numbers or positive numbers. This code will work for all print programs we just did by just changing the if condition as we learnt in the print. Now let's see count programs which is also equally easy like count the number of even numbers in an array. Here again we take our print program before the loop we initialize a variable to store count and initialize it to zero. Inside the loop where we are printing we will replace that statement to just increment count by one. Once we are outside of the loop we print count. This will give us the count of all even numbers. Now this program can have also variations like count all the number divisible by 5 or 3 digit number or count numbers ending with 5 etc. You just need to change the if condition as we learnt in the print and it will be a new count program. Now how do we do max and min programs? Let's say a program to find the maximum and minimum number in an array. We need two variables first to hold our max and min value. Note we do not initialize them to zero as that can introduce one additional number zero which can potentially be min which is not in the array. So we initialize them always to the first element of the array which is the array element at index zero. Now inside the loop, we just check if any array element is greater than the max value we have. If yes, then we make it the new max. Similarly, we put one more check for min. If any array element is less than min, then that becomes our new min value. Once we have checked all values in the array, outside the loop, we will print max and min. The next category of the program could be character array programs. Here along with the array concepts, 
you need to know the basic of character class as well to answer those questions. Here also we will first do print programs. Now the first program is just to print each character with its ASCII value. Here our input will be a character array and our traversal loop remains the same. Once inside the loop, we print the each character element and then we also print its value typecasted to int which gives us its ASCII code. In the same program, you could also be asked to add a serial number while printing. Here i in the for loop is already starting from 0 and incrementing by 1. So we will just use i plus 1 to give us the proper position instead of index. This will give us the required output starting from 1. The next program is to print only uppercase characters from the array. We again take our traversal loop. Inside the loop we just need to add an if condition and use character dot is uppercase function to check if the character is uppercase and then only print it. This gives us the required output. There can be multiple variations of this program like instead of uppercase it could be print only the lowercase characters or only digits. You just need to change the if condition for all different programs. In next category of programs you have to create a new string from some select characters in the array like return a string of only uppercase characters from an array. It is very similar to some program we just learned in numbers. Only in character and string we have to concatenate. Here too we have three steps to convert any print program into creating a new string program. So we take our program to print uppercase characters. You declare an empty string before the loop. Inside the loop Instead of printing, we just concatenate the characters to string. Once outside the loop, we can return or print our newly formed string. Here too, you can just change the if condition for creating a new string with only lowercase, digit, etc. Or the program could also be to change the case and then print it as a new string. In that case, we will again first declare a new string and take our traversal program. In that we will add an if condition to check if the character is uppercase. If yes, we will concatenate the lowercase character else we will concatenate the character converted to uppercase. Once we finish the traversal, we print the answer. This will give us the program to reverse the case. Next category is count program. The same print program could be asked as a count program like write a program to count all uppercase characters in an array. So we take our same printing program and use the same three steps we learnt earlier and put in a variable to store count before the loop. Inside the loop instead of printing just add one to count and print this count outside the loop. There can be many variations of this program like count any specific characters like R and T, count all vowels or digits in the array. In that case you just need to change the if condition as per the question and the entire code remains the same. The next category of programs are string array programs. Here we have arrays containing strings so these are combination programs where you need to know array concept plus java string concept. You can revise all string class methods by going through our video on string. The first program which we are going to do is to take a string array and print all strings which have even length. Here too our traversal loop remains the same. Inside it we will just add a if condition which uses string length function to get the length and check if it is even. If yes, we print it. This will give us our required program. The next program which we are doing is to print all strings in an array which start with th. 
I'm using th but it could be any other substring like he, she or it can be any single character also like I, R. Here we just need to change the if condition to use the string function starts with. This will print all array strings which start with th. Another variation of this program is to print all strings ending with ing. You need to change only the if condition this time to use the string function ends with. The program could also be print all string which contain and. Then you need to use contains function. Or the program could be to print the first character of each string. Then you can use carat zero function as it extracts the first character. If you are asked to extract multiple characters like first four characters, then you can use substring function too. Now the next set of programs are where you are asked to edit the string and then print it, like capitalize all string and then print it. Here again we take our array traversal loop and inside it we just convert the string to uppercase or lowercase as asked in the question and then print it. This will give us the desired output. The next program we will do is to capitalize the first letter of each string. In that case we will extract the first character by using caret zero function and then capitalize it. We will then extract the remaining string using substring function. Then we will print both of them. This will give us the desired output. The next program is to swap the first and last character and then print it. Here again we extract the first and last character using the caret function. The middle string we will get using the substring function. Then we just print them by swapping the first and last characters. This will give us the required program. Now you could also get nested loop programs where inside an array program you are asked one of the string programs. For this I am assuming you know the string programs we have already covered in these videos. If not you can watch them in the link given. I will show you how to insert one program inside it as an example and you can try nesting any of the string programs from this video in an array program. So the program which we are going to do is to take a string array and print each string in reverse. Here we have an array of string so we take our standard array traversal loop. Now inside this loop we will insert our string reversal program. I have first copied each array string into string s for ease of use and familiarity but you can use arri directly in the string program as well. If you see the string program is the same. We first declare an empty string which will store our reversed string. We put in our standard string traversal template which uses caret function to extract individual characters. In the nested loop we will add the character to the beginning of the new string. This will reverse our string. Once we are out of the inner loop we print the reversed string. Like this you can combine array with any of the string programs you have learnt with me in the earlier video. We are yet to cover programs which require multiple 1D arrays and searching and sorting of 1D arrays. We will cover it in part 2. If you have any questions you can reach out to us at simplycoding.in or you can join us for our online classes as well. Thank you and all the best.